purpose of the project has been to invite staff from museums and libraries to consider exciting new ways of engaging with children and young people. And the process that we've created has been based on a creative inquiry approach. So we started off with a conversation about what people find inspiring. What do they feel passionate about? What are the sources of inspiration for them, both inside their work environment, but also outside in their lives? Well, I was kind of really excited about today because I knew we had to bring along inspirational objects and little skills that we could do. So I knew it was going to be a bit different from a normal working day. And I've really enjoyed it. Today's been really enjoyable. I was in the same group as Motion House, so we were doing a dance in the hall. Um, and the site that we're at today is the site that I work at every day. I'm the curator manager here, so I'm used to looking at the building very much from the perspective of how we interpret its history. And today I was in one of the rooms doing a dance, so it was totally different from what I'd normally do and made me look and experience the building in a totally different way. Uh, so I brought along today of my inspirational object a book, uh, this book here, uh, called The Participatory Museum by Nina Simon. The reason I, I brought this along today was that it very ties a lot with the work I do at Think Tank, of course, being about participation. But it's really the woman that I was bringing with me, the person, Nina Simon, who I think is an inspirational um, person in the museum world. Perhaps on the first planning days I was asking questions like how long is it going to last for, why are we doing it, what are the outcomes? And I think working at the Science Centre, the phrase creativity, I was thinking about it in terms of artistic output, so doing a picture or performing a piece of music, um, which wasn't something that I was really comfortable with. But as I was going through the process, I got to reflect on projects that I've been part of before where effectively things had gone wrong and they had deviated from an original plan. And it reminded me how some of those deviations ended up in a much better project at the end. We've invited a range of artists working in different art forms and different disciplines to create an experience for our participants which gives them an insight into each artist's way of thinking, way of looking at the world, their creative practice. And then we've invited the participants to reflect on what they take from that and apply those reflections, those insights into the challenges that they face. Challenges of participation, of extending audiences, of engaging with young people. And then we've invited artists who really we feel can respond to that brief or that context in exciting ways to come and visit their locations and generate between two and seven different ideas for creative projects or processes, their own responses to those locations. And then we've invited them to share those with the participants. And through that, encouraging them to reflect on the different sort of relationships that they could have with artists and practitioners so that they can really start to see what it might be like to be a creative producer, to define a brief with, together with an artist, not fix the outcomes in advance, but rather identify the questions rather than the answers. Artists bring ideas, they bring fresh approaches to engaging our audiences with culture, with heritage, of art, history, science. They can kind of think outside the box and encourage us to think outside the box and find new ways to engage audiences and provide them with those really unique kind of emotional experiences that they're going to drive them to come back and revisit us. Meeting the artists today has been really good because it's been a really good chance to see how other people from outside would interpret the site and quite often those people are bringing their own expertise and their own skills and knowledge of their art forms and adding it to the site which is, is brilliant really. And now particularly having met a number of artists and indeed scientists who work with artists, it's opened up my mind to their work processes and their ethics and philosophies. And I've been very pleasantly surprised to find that actually there's a great deal of overlap and shared thinking. It's, it seems to come down to actually just different vocabularies. At Arts Connect, we're really excited about creativity. We're really passionate about the arts and heritage sector that we support because we know the value of some of the fantastic collections we have in this region. We know the value of them for children and young people. And we also have a rich resource in the national portfolio organisations we have in this region. And one of the ways we've gone about bringing those sectors together 
is to create a mentoring programme for heritage professionals. As we went on, it became clear what we might get out of it and it was very much about our personal experiences, finding out what we like about art and what excites us. But this process has enabled me to really think about what we would want to get out of an artistic relationship. So I'm thinking particularly of how we work with our local communities. It's a really important aspect of our work. Today I've been with Sarah Mossop, who's a freelance education consultant, has got a huge amount of experience working with artists in learning and engagement programmes, both within a, an exhibition a gallery setting, but also out within the community. So today's been an opportunity for Sarah to impart her knowledge and expertise. In preparation for my meeting with Toby, I was putting together a package of information about all the things which I feel I've learnt over the years, which I think might be useful, but also identifying a number of artists whose practice I think is really interesting, both in terms of what they're making in terms of new work, but the kinds of situations they work in, and also people who have a lot of experience of working with um, different audiences who are quite confident about working in a uh, participatory situation. For me it's absolutely vital that we find new and exciting ways to engage young people with culture, with heritage, with our heritage sites and also we want to broaden our audiences and young people are the best way of doing that. If you can engage with them in new ways you know they're going to come back, they're going to bring their friends, they're going to broaden our audiences and, 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 and tell their colleagues and that's really exciting. At the heart of what we've been doing through this programme is giving heritage professionals the opportunity to get really close to the artistic process and to feel what it's like to be an artist exploring the world through their eyes and to think differently so that you don't know the answers so that you can come up with something truly creative, truly developmental and something that's going to inspire everybody and of course in particular for us inspire children and young people whether they're attending in a school group or whether they're with their families at the weekend. It's been absolutely fascinating watching the way Motion House work and getting to know the individuals involved and understanding how what we see as a performance has got this enormous amount of practical planning but also inspiration behind it. So I feel privileged to have been able to see that, but also it's given me the opportunity to learn about how artists use creative planning and maybe how we, it can overlap and relate to the sorts of work that we do in museums and historic houses as well. I was really excited when Sue invited me to be part of the conversation and in a way what's happened here is that we have gained real insight into how creativity works. I was dreading the thought of having to spend time with lots of artists because entirely of the preconceptions that I brought with me. But actually, it's been a really sort of eye-opening experience. I feel much more confident in trying to use new and different types of artists, different media, in getting across some very complicated and potentially uncomfortable ideas to our audiences. So where this process could have been a training programme of more conventional means, actually this has been a hugely creative process which has involved very high quality and experienced artists working across a range of practices to really engage with the participants, to share how they think, how they see as well as what they make and through that exchange has come the beginning of something really extraordinary. I think what's changed most is my approach and particularly towards managing a new team of people that worked across sites in quite different ways previously. Um, our team meetings now are a lot less about me disseminating information at a group of people and it's much more about us working collaboratively to find solutions to the problems that we face in our day-to-day -day work. To sum up the whole process for me, I think it's really been a treat to step away from my regular working day and be given the opportunity to to almost go back to studying, to researching, to take a moment out and understand myself more and my practice more and, and the new institution that we've become.